Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, weiss-sound.com, and now Weiss Advice here on YouTube. Compression, oh my god, it's such a simple idea, and yet it gets so complicated so fast. What is compression? Well, it's pretty simple. It's just something where we say if a sound goes over a certain level in volume, we turn that sound down. Simple as can be, right? But there's the mechanism of how we turn it down. How fast are we applying that gain reduction? How fast is the compressor letting go? How hard are we compressing it? What are we actually reacting to? Are we filtering out the low end? Are we working on the whole signal? What's the shape of the compressor? Is it something where the signal is just completely unaffected until it breaches that threshold? Or does it start getting a little bit of gain reduction as it approaches the threshold? All of these things come together and it forms this device Device that can really do a lot of different things. And to make it even more complicated, it's all dependent on our source. The exact same settings on a snare drum are going to sound completely different than those same settings on a vocal. And it's because the shape of the sound is completely different. A snare drum is very fast. It goes up in level real quick and then it decays right back down and then maybe there's some room tone that hangs out for a bit. Snare drum will last maybe like 10 to 30 milliseconds. A vocal on the other hand, we have an attack time where gradually the voice comes up and then we might be talking, speaking, or holding a line for several seconds to, well, the way I go, several minutes. So those settings suddenly start to react to the program material very, very differently. All right, I'm gonna play a little bit of this song and then I'm going to start describing how I conceptualize compression because I think that by conceptualizing it correctly, we can make the whole process a lot easier. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making up an excuse. Live like there ain't nothing to lose. By the way, just as an aside, this song is called Do It Over Again. It's by Ali Blake, and I'm going to put a link to the music video because it's a great record, and the music video is awesome, and she's a super talented artist, so I definitely encourage you to check it out. So what we have in front of us here is the unmixed, just faders up version. It's a blank slate, and I wanted to start there so that I could really start showing you all of the different things that we can do. Okay, so when I listen to this, I hear a record that's pretty open sounding. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making up an excuse. We may want to change that. We may want to make the sound a little bit more present in some interesting ways. And this is where compression comes in. We can think of a compressor like a magnifying glass, and we can put that magnifying glass over just a part of the sound. So for example, we could look at a phrase that maybe has some high points and some low points in terms of level. Like for example, this drum loop right here. Right, so we have some big hits in that drum loop, and then we have some smaller hits, some, some hits that are there and kind of acting almost like ghost notes. They kind of get lost a little bit in the context of the overall mix. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making up an excuse. I mean, we feel them there. It's not like they're doing nothing, but it's not like we're dramatically hearing it either. Well, I can take a compressor and I can make the loud material closer in level to the quiet material and then turn the whole signal up, effectively taking the quiet stuff and making it louder. So let's check that out. Do a little before and after, actually. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making up an excuse. So when I put the compressor on, all of those little inside notes suddenly become more hearable, and we get a lot more of the groove. This is because I'm using compression in the way that it's typically intended, simply by making the dynamic range more compressed.
Now, of course, we can become a little bit more intricate with the way that we're doing things. We could simply work on a part of the signal. For example, I could zoom in on the attack of the bass. If we listen to this bass, it's pretty round. When I say round, I mean that the attack is almost the same level as the sustain. What if I wanted there to be more attack? Well, by manipulating those controls I was talking about earlier, I can slow the attack way down on the compressor, turn the threshold really low so that it's acting over the whole signal, and basically end up compressing everything except for the attack. And that would end up sounding like this. Here's the before and after. So it's like I've put a magnifying glass over the attack. I could also do the reverse. I could go back to my drums here and I could use a very fast attack and a slow release, or I'm sorry, a fast attack and a medium release, not a slow release. And that's going to effectively put a magnifying glass over the sustain. Or I could simply do gentle compression over an entire source, like, say, the vocal. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making up an excuse. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making up an excuse. Live like... And if we hear that in context, that can be really cool. Let's let's play this line before and after without the compression. This line in particular. Live like there ain't nothing to lose. Live like there ain't nothing to lose. So what I want you to do is listen for the little breath that shows up in Ali's voice and also listen to the way that the note change is occurring and how it's being perceived when she does the little run. Live like there ain't nothing to lose. Live like there ain't nothing to lose. Right, because we're bringing up that lose, it's becoming more apparent. And because we're bringing up the other quiet sounds like the breath, that little breath becomes more apparent. And so it's putting that magnifying glass over everything. Now, there are a lot of compression techniques. I'm going to be going over a lot of compression techniques on this channel, which is why I've created a compression playlist. I would not be able to put it all into one video. It would last forever. But I think simply by saying, okay, a compressor is a magnifying glass. We are going to take a part of the sound, whether it's the entire entire phrase that we want to zoom in on, or maybe it's just a micro piece of the envelope that we want to zoom in on. We're going to exaggerate that specific part of the sound. Now, when we're using compression and when we're doing this, there isn't a right or wrong. And I think this is ultimately the most challenging part. There is no such thing as doing it correctly. You did not compress something correctly or incorrectly. There's only the choices that we make as it serves the song in artistic direction, and that is very subjective. So, a lot of the times it comes down to context, and as we learn, and as we go, and as you watch these videos, we are going to be refining our aesthetic and becoming better at determining what's going to be best for a song. Song. So for example, as is, I think that having this heavy compression on this drum is actually working. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit making up an excuse. Live like there ain't nothing to lose. But the reason it's working is because it's filling up all of this open space. It's bringing up all the rhythm drivers that were not present without it. Bite the bullet and choose. Quit. However, I cheated here, I've muted some of the arrangement. If I unmute the other elements that are in this part of the record, Bite the bullet and choose, quit making up an excuse. That groove is there. If I throw on this compression, Bite the bullet and choose, quit making up an excuse. 
What was previously benefiting the record is now actually just making it cluttered and distracting. So we always have to be wary of what we're doing in the context that we're doing it. I hope that you like this video. I know that it's not the typical video you're used to seeing on how do I use a compressor. I haven't really talked about the mechanics specifically. I haven't shown you a specific great technique or anything like that, but I'm giving you an overview of the concept. And I think as you begin to fill in your gaps of understanding, this video is actually going to make more and more sense and become a better video as you go along. All right, guys, if you dig what I'm doing here on this channel, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, more videos that go into explicit compression techniques and everything else involved in the mixing process, got to hit that subscribe with the bell notification. And as always, we are musicians. Sound is our instrument. I will catch you next time.